hyphen is, is that a hyphen last name uh, my, my last name is a mouthful it's um, not hyphenated but it's Schalkhauser Tower that's a yeah that's a long last name I'm I'm so glad you're here to join us today I'm so excited to talk about your book I'm just going to jump right into this so what is the title of your book and what is it about yeah, sure. Um, yeah, super excited. This is the first book. Um, I actually am a, a co-author. Um, it's a collaborative book. There are 10 of us authors in the book. Um, I got a copy of it here. It's called Lead with Love. And it's all about stories that really honor a mother's journey. And it was it was not necessarily my brainchild. I was just very fortunate to be a part of it. And um, ironically, most of the other, I'm the only author out of the 10 of us that is here in the States. They're all Canadian. <laughs> so, um, but I was really excited when I was invited to be uh, an author in this collaborative book because the stories in it, there's a, they run the gamut. Um, we, we'll talk a little bit in probably a minute, I'm sure, about my story, um, which is called um, Mothering Through Self-Empowerment. But every author, every woman who wrote in this, you know, tells a story about her journey of motherhood from, you know, a very particular um, point in time, a certain point of view. And it's so beautiful because, you know, whether you're a mother or not, you're going to relate to some of these stories, if not all of them. And these women, all of us included, have, you know, shared very vulnerably, given you a glimpse into our lives. and. I think had taken the reader on a journey and you know people that have been reading the book and commenting which has been so lovely i love it when people message me and be like oh my gosh i read your chapter and it really resonated with me and i totally saw myself in it it i think it just inspires all of us um whatever journey that we're on because we all have stories that are really important i think it helps us to feel that we're not alone and that our stories matter and that other people are on similar journeys so yeah, it's a collection of stories to honor a mother's journey and 10 beautiful chapters. Um, yeah, and it's a self-published book, just so you know, but it is available on Amazon for those that want to find it there. So now I'm curious, how did you end up uh, meeting these Canadians to work on this? Yeah, how did, how did that happen? I know, is it a kind of a, yeah, it's kind of a wild story. So there's, um, two women who run um, this self-publishing kind of coaching program that's called um, the Studio Press. And I became friends with one of them last year. And we were talking about the writing process and my desire to be an author. I had, up until this, I'd had some articles um, that I've written that were published on Elephant Journal. I don't know if you're familiar with that online publication. Um, they've kind of changed the pro process for that now. Um, several years ago, you, like, you had to submit your articles. They had to be approved before they would publish anything. And so I started there writing articles and having things published on Elephant Journal. But that, I really, I wanted to write a book. And I felt very, um, the whole process of writing a book just felt daunting. <laughs> And so, you know, talking with this woman who is a basically like a book coach, um, she's like, well, we've got this collective book that we're going to be putting together starting at the beginning of 2021 on mothering. And I had written some things that she had read online that were very much around the subject of mothering. And she's like, I think your voice and your story would be great. Would you want to be a part of it? Um, like I said, it wasn't really until we were literally halfway through the writing process, um, you know, working on our chapters, submitting them, that I realized I was the only person from the States. So um, they're all up in Canada. Um, I just, it's, it's the beauty of the online world though, right? Like you can collaborate with people from anywhere and put together a book. Like how incredible is that? Yeah. So all of us in this book are first time authors um, as far as being, you know, published in a book, which is exciting. So all of us kind of going through the same journey together. I think what's really cool about that too is if anybody watching this has had that like kind of inkling of like, hmm, could I write a book? Yes, you can. Um, it's not as daunting as it seemed. And having gone through the process, I'm super excited to do it um, and write my own now. Yeah. Well, now I'd like to know, well, you're, you're, I want to know about what you're working on on your own. But before that, I want to know about your chapter in the book. 
And how did you come up with the idea for that? What is it about? Yeah, so like, yeah, so I said the um, the chapter is called Mothering Through Self Empowerment. I've got two kids. Uh, my daughter will be twenty five this year. My son will be twenty one. Crazy. So I, you know, you look back on all of your years of mothering, and you know what, like, what's the one? I was looking at what's the one highlight story, the thing that really kind of changed how I mother because the whole theme of it was like mothering nurturing you know is the overall theme for the stories in the book and one particular time absolutely stood out because it's when I changed my view of mothering and how I mothered in a very significant way and it all centered around um, my divorce from the father of my children and how that pivotal moment changed everything for the better actually and so I wrote about that I wrote about how I felt like I had failed as a parent going through that process of divorce how actually that was the thing that allowed me to redefine what motherhood was for me I think for so many just like talking about that specifically I think so many people all of us we if you if you're a mother you you look at your mother your grandmothers you look at all the role models around you they give you a an idea of what this role is like and you're like okay that's it and I got my idea and that's what I'm going to go with and then we kind of lose ourselves in the process we take on these roles of what we think we should be doing and that's what happened to me like I literally lost myself in the process and I was not mothering from a place of empowerment I was just trying to meet everybody's needs please everybody and learning how to change that and put myself first and it changed everything. I feel like if I can show my children through my example of how power, you know, how to live out your dreams, go for your the things that are important to you, um, it empowers them to do the same, right? Like I, if I'm not going after my dreams and my goals, and if I'm putting everything on the back burner for them, what is that going to show them? Um, you know, that they can do in their lives, and I want them to feel empowered to go for their dreams and to also to learn that they have the self agency to step up and care for themselves and put themselves first. So that idea of self empowerment was, it had to come from me first. And then that just changed how I took on this role of mothering. And I also share in there a very specific example, um, how the relationship with my daughter changed significantly, very significantly. And I shared a, a letter that she wrote in there. So yeah. It turned out, it's, you know, a, a part of the story that was very challenging and, you know, how it turned around and became a really beautiful one. The whole process was beautiful, though. Yeah. So, so that's my oh, oh, I was just going to ask, how old were you, your children when you got divorced? How long ago did you make this change? Yeah, um, my daughter was 14 and my son was 10. Yeah. So it was a little while ago. No, but yeah. you still, you have learned and now are, I guess, what are your dreams that you're, you're chasing after now that you, you want? Yeah, well, you know, it was interesting. So around the time that I got divorced, I made a big change. I had gone through a yoga teacher training program. I had made the decision right before that to open up my own yoga studio at the time I was living up in New Hampshire. So I owned um, Peace Tree Yoga up there for 12 years, almost 13 years. And so that's kind of where it started. You know, it was me giving myself permission to go after that, to start this own, my own business, to create a very vibrant um, community. I loved what I did. And then, um, you know, that has evolved and changed. And um, I'm now down, you know, living in Massachusetts. I sold that studio um, a little over two years ago. And I still do online yoga meditation classes, but my biggest thing that I've been doing is coaching. So I'm a spiritual business coach for women who are looking to turn their profit, their passions into profits, their passions into a business. And so that's what I do now. And I love it. I love it. So that's part of my dream. I, mean, I still have the goal to write my own book, which is, you know, we're, we're working on that too. So there's many dreams. <laughs> well, yeah, I was going to ask you, is um, is the book that you're working on, does it have to do with the coaching stuff or is it completely different? 
Um, you know, the, the book that I will be working on is, I wanted, I felt like the, when I wrote the chapter for Lead With Love, I felt like it was just, you know, it's one snippet from a time in my life and there's so much more I wanted to share. Like just couldn't pack it all into one chapter, right? And that was what's so great is I, I want to tell the story of, it's like taking that and elaborating on it. And, but also putting in some very practical, um, hopefully, and I'm sure inspiring tips and things for people who are looking to gotta get clear on their purpose in life. Like how do you get clear on your purpose in life? How do you then take that and turn that into um, your own business? How can you, so it's gonna be a personal story wrapped up into, um, you know, some practical things that will help people on their journey as well. So I'm gonna kind of weave both in together because I feel like you have to lead by example, right? You have, you know, if I can share the things from my life that makes it more powerful and people can relate to it. So. No, I agree with that completely. That's very inspirational. And it sounds very interesting too, because it seems like you have lived a pretty interesting life just from the little tidbits that you've given us. I guess for me, I, I also want to know what is your story? Where are you from? You said you're from New Hampshire. Did you grow up there? And no, are... actually. Oh, yeah, cool. I grew up in Michigan. Yeah, I grew up in Michigan. Oh, really? Yeah. So how did you end yeah. up? So where did you come from? I guess you came from Michigan, but how did you start there and then end up in Massachusetts now? Yeah, um, I grew up in Lansing, Michigan. Um, actually, we just, my parents, um, the house that I pretty much grew up in, they had for over 50 years, they just sold and they actually just moved out here like three weeks ago, three weeks ago. <laughs> um, but yeah, I grew up in Lansing, Michigan. Um, I went to Michigan State. Um, that is where I met the father of my children. And we, when we graduated from Michigan State and I had a degree in business, I don't know why, because I really had no, it was not my passion. And this is, this is part of the thing, right? Is like you, you start to go for things that aren't yours. And you know, the things that I really wanted to do um, at that point in life, I didn't go after them because like my friends went to Michigan State so I went there I I kind of just let myself be led by others um, and I know I'm not the only one who has done that in their life right we make decisions not necessarily based on what we really want but we're trying to please somebody else I wanted to be with my then boyfriend and so we moved out from Michigan to Massachusetts he got a job out there I'm like yeah I'm gonna come with you we got married a year later. Um, we then, you know, a couple of several years later had our kids. We moved up to New Hampshire and then, you know, that marriage fell apart <laughs> and um, the rest of my journey continued. Um, yeah, we, that whole, that whole thing, but it, it's, you know, it's just part of the journey, right? It's just part of what makes us who we are now and I can look back and look at all the decisions that I made that I did not make for me and now I get to make decisions for me and that's really empowering and to understand that difference and to claim your agency is so powerful. Um, I see my daughter now, like I said, she's 25 and you know, I see her finally making decisions for her and it's really exciting. So is there a reason you moved back to Massachusetts or did you just want? Um, yeah, the reason we moved back to my, so I, I got, I, I should say in all that story, after I got divorced, had no intention of getting remarried again. And then um, a couple of years after that, I met this amazing man and uh, we've been married now for uh, several years and we got married um, at a drive through in Vegas. How cool is that? We were engaged, but we went on a trip to Vegas not to get married. And we're like, well, why don't we just do it while we're here? Like, this is great. And it was the best decision ever. Um, but yeah, so I remarried. And my um, husband now, he was he works down in Massachusetts here. And so he was making the, tra the, the drive from New Hampshire down to Mass, like, you know, sometimes three, four hours a day in the car. It was horrible. So once my kids were out 
uh, you know, gone to college, we decided we need to move you down to get closer to work. And the irony is we got him closer to work and then the pandemic hit and then he worked for a line. <laughs> so we're like, hmm, but no, I'm, I'm grateful we're here. Yeah. Uh, you know, so again, did you move here right. right before the pandemic? We, we, it would be uh, two years this coming fall. Yeah. We moved in the fall and then the pandemic hit the following, what, March, April? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you really haven't even experienced like real, not, much, no. not that much. No. I know. Isn't it crazy? So I feel like now we're like, oh my gosh, we get to go do all these things that we couldn't do before. And yeah. So that's exciting. Yeah. So back to your writing, I guess, why did yeah. you want to be a writer? You know, when that period of time when I went through my divorce, I found writing to be very, very cathartic. It was the thing that helped me to make sense of my thoughts and emotions. And so I wrote a lot. I wrote my thoughts. I wrote poetry. I just wrote all the time. And I'd always liked writing. I had a sixth grade teacher who always told me, you should write, you're a good writer. You know, you have one of those teachers in your life and you're like, you know, thanks Mr. Baker. <laughs> he was he was a great little cheerleader. But then, you know, that was sixth grade. So, you know, but he kind of planted the seed. And, but going, you know, as I started to write a lot during that time of the divorce, I realized that that's a big part of how I share my voice, how I process, but also, how I can share my message with other people. So um, that's when I started writing articles. Like I said, I had some that were published in Elephant Journal. Um, I had an ongoing newsletter with my yoga community and I wrote a lot for that. So writing just became a part of how I shared my message, shared my story, shared what I felt was important, used it for inspiration, for wisdom, to help others. So yeah, the idea for writing a book was always kind of there in the background um, but like I said before just the whole how do you do that you know just seemed daunting but I love writing yeah so and I think that you know to some people if you know I feel like I, I'm not a great writer but we all have a story whether you actually write it down and put it in a book or not I think the process of writing and and kind of claiming and owning your story is really, really empower empowering, really powerful. Because we all have a story and, and everyone's story is important and deserves to be heard and witnessed and seen. So I'm, I'm a big cheerleader for people, whether it ever sees, you know, a bookshelf or not to, to write. Because I think it's, um, it's a great way to get in touch with who you are. What is your goal as a writer what milestone would you like to reach? Is it just to, to get a book out there or is, are there other things that you want to do too? Um, well, I, I think part of my goal in my writing, I mean, you know, it's kind of a little bit of what you said. There's part of my writing that's just for me, right? It's part of it that's just always for me. It's never going to see the light of day for anybody else. Um, and I think that's just part of how I process my thoughts and emotions, how I make sense of things. Um, but is when I write, for others, you know, it's really, I think, to illuminate, to share something that I think is going to maybe awaken them in some way, help them to see something a little bit differently, shed some light, share some wisdom. Um, I think, but it always, to me, it's not so much like, hey, I've gained this wisdom, look at this. I hope my goal is that from anything that I write and share, helps people to uncover that for themselves. I want other people to uncover their own power. I want people to uncover their own like amazingness, their own story. You know, everyone is here for a reason. Everyone here has a an amazing purpose. And so if what I write awakens something in somebody else to help them claim their purpose and live that out more powerfully, then I've done my job. <laughs> um, I, I feel like that's really it. I'm here to just help support and, you know, help others on their journey. That's that. And then if I could write a New York Times bestseller along the way, that'd be really awesome. I mean, why not? <laughs> I'll just throw it out there, which sounds crazy, but why not? Why no, not? I think, you know, why not have that, those big goals, right? I, I know that's really, yeah. 
I've, I've talked to so many authors at this point and I did not, I don't know anything about, I guess, publishing and yeah. book writing, but I, apparently it's really hard to, to do all that. But you know, why not? If you, Ruth, if you think you can do it, then do it. I don't know. Your life seems pretty interesting to me. So why not? Um, yeah, it, it's, it's out there. It's, you know, I've, I've, I've put that intention out there to the universe and um, yeah, you, you just never know. You never know who, you know, who might read this or read something else that I put out there that becomes the catalyst for something like that to take place, right? Or if I write my book and I self-publish it, which is probably the journey, the route that I'm going to go, you know, as I work on my own personal book, I'll probably self-publish it. But, you know, I know so many people who have done that and then it's gotten picked up by something else, you know, a publisher down the road. So you just never know, but you, you have to take action. You have to do it. If I don't do it, how is it ever going to happen? <laughs> so, you know, like each little thing is a step towards that and you just do it, you put it out there and you trust that something else is going to come out of it. And that's exactly what's happened. You know, every time I take action and put something out there, something amazing happens and then it leads to the next thing. And that's just how we get led on this path, right? Yeah. I totally agree. You're, you're right. If you don't do it, then it's never going to happen. So like you might as well just try it, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So back to i guess you I, I i always like to ask a question that's catered towards whatever book we're talking about and obviously mm -hmm. your book is about uh, motherhood and other things related to that so what is mm -hmm. you know the number p the number one piece of advice you would give to new mothers or e even uh mothers going through divorce whatever you want to tackle whatever think you think that you can give the best advice on <laughs> it's almost twofold. So I would say for, for new mothers, I would say trust your instincts. You are designed to care for that little baby in ways you don't even realize yet. So absolutely trust your instincts. Like you know so much. It's how we're designed, how we're created. So um, there's that. And then I think as maybe as you, you know, mothering, you get a little bit further is just to really make sure that you are not leaving, like, like I said before, that you're not leaving yourself out of the equation. That, you know, er, what you're doing is including you. It's so easy to put the needs of these beautiful, you know, little beings um, above our own. And yet they, like I said, they need to see us going for our dreams, living our dreams. And you can't do that if you pour everything you have into them and save nothing back for yourself. And I think there's a fallacy that says that as parents, we have to sacrifice everything. I saw my mom sacrifice so much for me and she was an amazing mother. But the feel like we have to sacrifice everything and then we have nothing left for us. Um, I don't think that serves our children. Um, and it doesn't definitely doesn't serve us. And I think you can do both. I think you can be a fantastic parent and be a fantastic human being, you know, going for your, like they're, they're, they're totally congruent. They can both happen. So don't give up on your own dreams. Don't make them all about your kids. Yeah. That is very inspirational. Cause I think oftentimes, yeah, there is that narrative of like, okay, once you have kids, like it's all about the kids and like, you have nothing left for yourself, but I think you're, it's important for you to have, like, you can still be a great parent and do your dream at the same time. Like, I feel like that's yeah. hard for a lot of people to grasp. So I, I, I think that's yeah. really cool that you are tackling this and talking about it openly. Cause it's not something that people talk about a lot. Right. And, and again, I'm not well, a mother, so I don't know, but what were you going to say? Yeah. There, you know, there's, there's this viewpoint in our society, you know, that says, first of all, like you have to like hustle and grind to like succeed, you know, you gotta like work both ends. You can't have both, right? You gotta either choose the career or you gotta choose the family. And I think it's all just BS. I think you can have it all and you can do it well and you can take care of yourself and you can take care of your kids and you can go, you can do it all, but you're gonna do it very differently. It's the energy with which you decide to do it and the boundaries that you set up for yourself and the things that you will absolutely decide to say no to because of the things you need to say yes to. It's how we design our lives, but we, like for me, I said yes to everything. 
for everybody else. I didn't have any personal boundaries for me, you know? So I felt like I had no time for me. It felt like an impossibility, but I had the wrong mindset. It wasn't that there wasn't enough time in the day. It wasn't that you know, there wasn't any of the right resources. It's because I had the wrong mindset and I had set up the wrong, the wrong boundaries, systems, whatever you want to call it, in place for my life. So when you change all of that, everything changes. How you do things changes. You have more time. You have more resources. You have more money. You can do it. Um, you can't do it with the old way, though. The old way of, like, I just got to hustle and grind and get everything done. Like, no, you'll never do it. But if we change our mindsets and we change how we view ourselves and what we think is possible, it's amazing. It's amazing what opens up. So. Yeah, I, I think that's a that's a great way to kind of wrap this up. But before we end this, is there anything else you want to talk about? Usually, um, any final thoughts? But also, I, I like people to plug like their social media or places where you can um, buy buy the books. So you can talk about that too. Yeah, yeah. So, um, like I said, you can find um, Lead With Love um, on Amazon. Um, if anybody is watching this, well, we are Bolton Access TV, so you are probably local. Um, I do have copies <laughs> that you could contact me directly. I have copies um, here. Um, I, you can find me on social media. My handle is Inner Sky Living. So, um, on Facebook, you can just look up my long name, Ruth Shawcross Tower. Um, or you could probably just find Ruth Tower, probably come up there. Um, or Inner Sky Living. So Inner Sky Living is the, the kind of the handle, the company from which I do everything. So, uh, But thank you so much, Ruth. It's been a pleasure. I'm so glad. This was a great conversation. I, I always love talking to um, people writing books about themselves or that type of, like their own stories and sharing their stories because I find it very empowering as a, as a young woman coming of age, like, oh, I can't have it all, even though I, I'm 21. So I, I'm going to wait a little bit. But when the time comes, I can have it all when I want it. Uh, yes, yes, you can. <laughs> uh, well, thank you so much for coming on to the show. This has been Book Talk, and we will see you guys next week. Thank you.